ready to go? All right. Hi, welcome back to another video. Sheik just joined us. And we are actually here because we want to take a look at this ever cool mini water cooler, which is a sealed unit. It's almost 20 years old. It's from end 2004. It's some kind of an like all in one water cooling solution, which we will try to check out today, see how this performs on a nowadays CPU. This specific unit is from Evercool, which was kind of like a bigger brand back then. I still have like five or six other very obscure coolers in my collection. Definitely going to check them out over the next like months and years, of course. This is the mini water cooler and I mean it's your best choice and you will get amateur to expert in no time. And what kind of looks like a fridge or like a speaker? That should be the radiator. There were three different versions available, CPU, VGA and HDD. This is the CPU version. You can already spot some tubing and fitting. And also, I mean, take off your loudly air cooler and replace it with your water cooler. Checking out the features on the back side, we can see that it's advertising silent operation, where we have to keep in mind that probably like 2004, silent meant something different than today. And also they're advertising a water level alarm and also pump alarm. So they should have some kind of sensors in there or something. Should be quite interesting. Thank God these blister packagings didn't make it to today's packaging because that is annoying. But at least I have some support from Sheik to open it. The packaging design from back then is also an interesting story. Continuing with the unboxing, we can find this tubing also already equipped with some, I wouldn't call it fittings, but it's like half a fitting. And I mean, with this, you can see that back then, like almost 20 years ago, it was far away from what we see today with all the G14 thread like connections you have on most of the water blocks. Like on here, it's not even an inner thread, it's like an outer thread, so it's completely different. But that should probably work. And yeah, I mean, here we have the CPU block, as you can see. It's a very shiny, like nice, high quality looking surface. Hey there. Interesting, interesting. With the protective film removed, it's still a pretty nice, shiny surface, considering that this is like... 20 years old, we have some screws, which means that we can also go ahead and open this in a second. We can see a bit of corrosion on the outer areas where the like foil was not sitting firmly on the surface. Also, if we check like reflections, it's always a nice way to do that. You can see that the outer areas, even though it's a very shiny surface, you can see that it's not entirely straight which should still be okay, I guess. But let's open this. Removed the screw, yeah. Uh, yeah, I removed the screws. That's not what I expected. I kind of thought, I mean, this is just a cover. I kind of thought that we can maybe like look at the structure. Well, maybe not. I asked for further assistance to analyze this block as you can see, this is not what I expected. I thought you could maybe take it apart, but it seems to be at least two parts of copper, maybe three. And then it's sealed with some sort of like epoxy stuff. At least it's pretty hard and seems like we cannot open this without killing it. Nein. Obviously the old cooler is not compatible to AM5. That's why we are quickly milling our own custom bracket to make the cooler compatible. Well, that should work fine, I guess. Now we should have our block ready for AM5 mounting, because if we check like other box contents, it's just a big amount of like mounting materials for different sockets, like, I don't know, Pentium 4 and stuff. I'm not sure what this is. But there's also other stuff included, like this anti-freeze water. It reads that you should mix this in like 3.5 to 1 ratio and apparently it's also like anti-corrosion stuff and considering that like this has been in there for like 20 years looks still pretty good. Ah, so these are some like locking rings I think they're called, like, like security rings. You put on these fittings to secure the tubing and this like tiny plier is to open and close them. But now we have to check out this thing, which just looks like a tiny fridge. I mean, it's somewhat comparable because at least it's a radiator for cooling, but very interesting design. I guess 
Below this mesh we would find an 80 millimeter fan. According to the manual this should be to set the fan speed. I guess it's going to be very simple, maybe you switch from like 7 to 12 volts, something like that. 4 pin Molex for power supply. Here we can add our fittings like for tubing. And I mean, this is not only a radiator, but it's also including the pump and also reservoir at the same time. That's why we also have this like filling port on top. Honestly, I really like it. It's a pretty cool design, especially considering how old it is. It's very compact. So we have this tiny radiator. As you can see, it's like a tube based radiator with uh, copper tubes and aluminum fins. As expected, we have an 80 millimeter fan sitting on top. The wire going to the left to the case is, I guess, for like some LED light for the case to light up the logo. Apart from that, there is not really much on it, like no control circuits or anything. And if I got it right, I'm still sure that it's just switching some voltage, like pretty simple. That's a nice design though. We can see the pump in the reservoir. So if we fill this up, it's gonna fill up this reservoir in here and then like, just simply pump it. It's a pretty neat design for this time and also especially for the space. It's pretty nice. We want to test it with this setup which is a B650E Aros Master paired with a 7900X. I mean compared to any of the most recent Intel CPUs it's going to be much more efficient. Still I guess for an 80mm radiator it could still be a challenge. To also get some sort of comparison value, we will first perform a test with this 280 AIO. After 10 minutes of gaming load, we have roughly 62 degrees Celsius on average during load with about 82 Watt as like constant load. And the AIO is running at 1000 RPM fan speed fixed. In Cinebench R20, we see close to 90 degrees Celsius peak with a single R20 run just quickly after doing the gaming test. To mount our CNC milled mounting bracket for this cooler, we now need some like distancers, some standoffs with uh, like thumb screws. Luckily for this kind of purpose, we have this adapter and offset mounting kit and you can already kind of guess what's inside just looking at this drawing in the front. So we have these standoffs, pretty much adapters from UNC uh, thread to M4 thread or like M3, both are included. And we have these thumb nets and also the offset mounting brackets for offset mounting. We're not going to do the offset mounting today, that's going to be something for a different video, but this should make mounting a lot easier. And regarding the offset mounting, just to also talk about this quickly to prevent some kind of comments, we tested this a few months ago, but I kind of messed up the testing and my conclusion back then that it's not really worth it. But you guys spotted that I actually did a mistake in testing, then I tested again and it was actually worth it, so we made these kind of like offset mounting standoffs, which we will cover in a separate topic. These standoffs in particular are interesting for direct die mounting because they lower the distance between the PCB and like your cooler plate. The distance between like the bottom thread and the PCB is eight millimeters. So your cooler can potentially sit quite a bit lower than stock and this will make it easier in case you go for direct die mount. And now put the adapter plate on. This looks quite decent. Now I have to attach the tubing and then time to fill up the AIO, if you can call it AIO. Finished with the tubing, also connected the four pin Molex to the front. Now I just have to put water inside. It's probably going to be exciting because it's a pretty small diameter. Perfect. The detail they put into the manual is actually outstanding. So a lot of different mounting mechanisms for all sorts of variation, cutting the tubing and actually everything and like mounting inside the case. Nothing about filling, perfect. I guess this will take a while. I will now power on the system without a GPU first, just to make sure that like nothing is leaking, pump is running. Let's see. <coughs> Ever cool? Please, please tell me what's wrong. Eh, 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 eh. I mean, this manual is great. It's telling me a lot of things I don't need, and all the things I need are not in there. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not sure why Evercool like continues to scream at me, but 
I mean, if we look at the description, it tells us that it has some sort of alarm for either the pump not running or for a low amount of water. But we can see that the pump is working and the water is filled until like the max, like all the way to the limit. Well, we lost some due to like some air being stuck in the like last tube, but now, as you can see, this is like filled all the way to the top. Maybe this can fix it. Test number two. Nice. Now I'm just waiting for the neighbors to maybe call like the fire department or something. Seems like the only way to maybe fix this is open it and check the internals again, which means that I will have to drain the loop, especially because I have to remove the entire fittings. I disassembled everything, checked the PCB and the IC on there because on the front side there's basically nothing, but on here we have a small circuit with LM309, which is like a comparator and I think it's like dual input, it's comparing the sensor for filling and also the sensor of the pump, which is probably just some RPM signal to some set like comparison value and something seems to be off there. Not sure if maybe one value is not correct or if like the comparison value is not correct. Also, I mean, this looks hand soldered, not quite sure on the quality of this. I might debug it further, but worst case, I will just, I will just take off this annoying speaker. I at least did some sort of debugging, checked the fan speed signal is there, pump speed signal is there, and the sensor is outputting, like the water level sensor is outputting 10 volt. Not sure if that's supposed to be that way or if it's supposed to be lower, but I also unplugging this one did not help. So I decided to just simply like solder off the speaker and now we will check again. Second attempt, now like filled everything, everything connected again. Let's retry. With this, we can control the fan speed. With orange, it's like set to high. And you can also see that there is definitely some flow going on. Well, that, sh that should be fine. This looks also good, like nothing is leaking, so I can now continue testing. It's a bit worse than I expected, but I mean it's also quite a bit lower surface area than previously. It's also running at the lower fan speed setting. And we see about 14 to 15 Kelvin higher temperatures than before. It's the same setting, same game, same roughly CPU package power. I mean, it's doable, it would run, but it's quite a bit worse. Obviously the surface area is so much smaller, but let's add turbo mode and wait another 10 minutes. I guess it's not worth even finishing the 10 minutes because it's like best case two Kelvin less than before, but it's like, it's like a lot louder, but temperature does not really improve. Now we're checking Cinemager 20 again and already looking at the idle temperature. I have the feeling this is going to be difficult doesn't even seem to be that bad. It's like at least pulling 150 watt. Honestly, I thought this would be much worse because we only lost like 400 points. That is still pretty amazing. Obviously, I mean, it was starting to thermal throttle because we hit 95 degrees Celsius. You could also see that at the like power consumption, but still we only lost 400 points. I expected this to be much worse. Cooling wise, I think if you go back to like 2004, 2005, like Pentium 4, maybe a press cut, should have been fine cooling wise, especially at a high fan speed mode. I mean, the, like the fan speed doesn't really do anything, but with the like power draw, also the CPUs had back then like 60 to 80 watt, probably typical also in gaming scenarios, would have been totally fine. Same as with this Ryzen 7900X. I mean, for any like daily scenario, it's not going to be great, but it would work. As long as you don't like render or anything, I guess this should be fine. I also want to point out that, I mean, we're looking at this like as an external radiator solution, but technically you could have also put this like inside your PC because on the back there were like also like 80 by 80 millimeter like threads. So you could put it in the back side of your PC. So that's something that would have been possible. And yeah, I guess it would just use it with low fan speed mode and then it's, it could have been considered silent, especially if you go back to like 2004. I think we had different standards back then for like a loud PC or like a more silent PC. Yeah, I guess that was another interesting video for a very obscure cooling solution from back then. I actually have another Evercool cooling solution that's also like even more obscure than this one. I hope you checked back for that. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye.